I think the Ballymacol dispersal is unique in that it is probably the most important dispersal sail in a generation. It is the first major dispersal of the work of two generations of the same family. And also it's the first dispersal that is a complete dispersal of the stock, I think more or less since the jail dispersal of the mid-1980s. And for that reason, I think it is pretty special. Barry McCall's stud was purchased by the Weinstock family in 1960. I think it's very special because it's a lovely farm, it's not overhorsed, and we've had the right families we've been breeding from. Extraordinary when the family purchased Barry McCall from the estate of the late Dorothy Padgett. There was about 130 horses involved in it, and two of the mares that they purchased at that time are the antecedents of the current bunch of mares that we have here. First of all, there was Country House, Red Reform, who was a fantastic champion miner in his time. After that, we had Sunny Gulf. Sunny Gulf is the ancestors of so many good horses, like Sun Princess, who won the Oaks for us, like Street Cry, Shammerdale. The families that we've got now at the moment, the 18 mares that we currently own, are all descended from those two families. And we've had a total of 30 Group 1 winners with bred here, 55 Group 1 races and I think that's an amazing achievement. I've been here since 1972, and that was actually the first year that we had two very, very good Group 1 winners in Salist and Sun Prince. Sun Prince was amazing in that he won at Royal Ascot three years in a row, and Salist, amongst the victories he had, was at Goodwood beating Park Top. They were two exceptional racehorses. Go back a long way. I think Troy's Epsom win was something that lived in my memory for a long time because it was kind of expected, but on the other hand, it was a very good field that year. And the Queen had a runner in it, and Willie Carson had to make his mind up whether to ride her Derby horse or ride ours, and he stuck with Troy. And I think that lived long in my memory. Sun Princess was an outstanding race mare who, who didn't race very often. She actually went to the Oaks as a maiden and won it very, very easily by a considerable distance. And she followed on from winning the Oaks, that she won the Ledger. Lord Weinstock always said that if she hadn't won the Ledger, she would have won the Ark. And maybe he was right because she was very close to winning the Ark. She then turned out to be a very decent broodmare herself. Hellenic. Hellenic is very important in the annals of Bally McCall because she was Michael Stout's first Group 1 winner for us when she won the Yorkshire Oaks and subsequently went on to Bred Islington and also won the Yorkshire Oaks, amongst other races. Pilsowski was an incredibly tough horse and a great traveller. He won six Group 1 races in five different countries. And it was very hard to get to the bottom of a proper racehorse. And, well, I believe a typical product of Valley McCall mares and Michael Stout, the right man to train. We've been fortunate enough to have some very nice horses from Ballymacall over the 30 odd years I trained for them. And obviously Pilsudski, he would be top of the pops because he, he was here as a five-year-old and he was a globe trotter. He had a wonderful constitution. He was as tough a horse as I have ever trained. Conduit would come a close second because he won a classic for them, the Ledger. He was Michael Stout's first Ledger winner, which was a great day for everybody. And he went on to America to win the Breeders' Cup two years in a row. A very typical Bally McCall horse in that respect. Sound and tough. And it took a little time, but it was worth it. We came along at Epsom. Lord Weinstock said that to win the Derby twice might have been a bit greedy, but he changed his mind. And Northlight won a second Derby for us. Another classic winner for Bally McCall stud was Golden, who won the 2000 guineas on his very first start as a three-year-old. And then he came back as a four-year-old to win the King George. Islington was a very, very good racehorse. She needed good ground, so she was suited by America, where she won her Breeders' Cup. She has been an outstanding broodmare for us, breeding five winners, and we have lots of fillies out of her, which we have in the sale. What's unusual about her breeding operation is she's had 11 foals in a row and 11 fillies. She's never had a colt, and she's carrying again to Kingman. We don't know what she's having, so that's going to be a surprise for somebody who ever buys her. She's a lovely mare for her age, for 18 years of age, she carries herself extremely well. 
I chose Tattersalls for the Ballymacall dispersal because they are the biggest and best in the business. And they find the international clients. We need international clients to get full value for these mares and horses that we're selling. And they do a very good job marketing. And I think it's, it's a rare opportunity for people to get involved and buy into these two families, two current families. Every pedigree page, there's something happening. And if it happens on one page, it's going to happen on another half dozen, maybe 15 pages. So it's a great opportunity. Well, I think the jewel in the crown is probably Abington, in that she's a wonderful opportunity to buy a foundation brood mare. And she's also still a racing prospect for 2018. It's very sad that we're coming to the end of this era, but I'm sure that Talisos are going to do an excellent job in disposing of the horses that we're selling, including nine foals, nine yearlings, 14 mares, eight fillies in or out of training, and eight horses in training. We're selling some of the older mares in Ireland. I didn't want to travel them over to Newmarket. The potential buyers are buying into well-known families that have been very successful, because you're breeding from proven lines. I wouldn't call them precocious, they're tough and they're staying tight. -lit. We can't get away from the fact that we've been trying to breed classic winners and derby winners particularly, and we've been successful to, to breed two derby winners, but I'm sure buyers of these horses will carry on and hopefully some of them will try to breed classic winners as well. We don't need just all speed, 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 but I have in recent times introduced more speed because that's to be a little more commercial because we have to be commercial and therefore hopefully the bit of speed we have injected will help these families in the long term. I think this is an opportunity particularly for overseas breeders to get into some old-fashioned decent group one breeding lines you know.